every meal has a story to tell. That is, if you're willing to look for it. I'm Danielle Pruitt, and I started Wild and Whole in 2016 with the express purpose of redefining our connection to food and exploring the qualities that make wild ingredients so profoundly unique. I'm cooking three different recipes. I am driven by curiosity, and my inspiration springs from harvesting food directly from its source. I've spent the past decade of my life trying to eat consciously, and believe me, it's not always easy. But it's pushed me to search in places I'd never expect for the most unpredictable of ingredients. I want to challenge your perception of what food is, where it comes from, and how those two elements are woven into our lives. Because connecting to our landscape through food means so much more than just the calories that sustain us. Welcome to Wild and Whole Sourced. For most of America, the term lobster conjures images of giant cold water crustaceans with massive crushing claws. But in tropical waters, lobster means something else entirely. Here you'll find the spiny lobster, or rock lobsters. Though they share the same name, they're distinctly different, especially in the kitchen. These underdogs of the lobster world are exactly why I'm here in Isla Mirada, Florida. It's the coveted mini-season a two-day window that allows recreational divers the opportunity to harvest these bugs before commercial traps enter the waters. I've joined forces with Bree Van Scotter, a formerly trained chef and cookbook author. Bree is a certified diver and has a deep love for the ocean. She's found a home for her outdoor pursuits and passion for cooking with her brand, Wilderness to Table. It seemed only appropriate that we meet here at the Rain Barrel Village, home of Betsy, the 30-foot tall spiny lobster, and the famous lobster shack to discuss what the week has in store for us over a lobster roll. Not only is this my first time in Florida, uh -huh. but this is going to be my first time diving. First time harvesting your own lobsters, but you're going to hold your breath I know. 30 feet and get it all by yourself, and you've never done it. No, so I'm never. I'm actually impressed that you are up for this challenge. I'm going to be honest, I'm very, very nervous. Uh, no, don't I am be not nervous. exactly uh, the most comfortable person in water, and I just feel like there's a lot of challenges with the whole thing. From what I understand, it's about remaining calm, and I'm yeah. not calm. But you do a lot, like of a lot of yoga. So I that do, will help. do a lot of yoga. Yeah. yeah. Cause that will help you like find your center and just kind Breathe of and become relax. one with the ocean, right? <laughs> and I'm excited to try this. Oh, which me too. interestingly this is not spiny lobster, it's Maine lobster. But what's the difference? Besides it being a completely different subspecies, is I think people expect spiny lobster to be the same succulents from a New England or a Maine lobster. Right. And it's totally not. And I think that's where people go wrong with cooking it is because they, they expect one thing. And I think with anything wild game or anything you're trying new, it's best to like know what kind of qualities they have and work with it. And so I'm so excited to cook with it because I know how I want to treat it differently. Um, it's going to be fun for me because I've eaten spiny lobster, but I've never caught it. So uh -huh. like going from the very beginning and cleaning it and cooking it is going to be, it's going to be incredible. I'm not going to be able to just jump in the water and do it, so... No, it's really good to get some good, proper training before... I've got a great instructor lined up, so I'm going to have him uh, teach me the ropes. I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope you love it. I really I do. do. I do, too. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Don't be nervous. It's so fun. <laughs> before the season opens tomorrow, I'm going to supplement my training. I really, really want a successful harvest, so I'm meeting up with local diver and instructor, Mike Walsh, to help me with some real life scenarios out in the ocean. The first lesson is on how to do a proper breathe up, which is a series of diaphragmatic breathing that slows down the heart rate and prepares the body to stay underwater for long periods of time. I also learn that I can trick my body into conserving oxygen by sticking my face in the water. Although it kind of just looks like I'm trying to drown myself. What I'm actually doing is practicing some really long breath holds. Yo, are you okay? I'm okay. All right, how was it? Great. Yeah? So relaxing. Nice and relaxing, good. Yeah, like you don't think holding your breath is going to be very relaxing. No. But it really is. Yeah. 
The last lesson is equalization. Mike shows me how to equalize the pressure in my sinuses, ears, and masks to help avoid injury. Oh my god, I just got it. Does it work? Yeah. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> You're a great teacher. The rest of my training is broken up into two parts. First, Mike takes me to some deep water, about 130 feet deep. We're using a line attached to a buoy to assist our descent and help with proper orientation. If I can get comfortable at these steps, the shallower dives tomorrow should feel more doable. You just made it to, I think your deepest was 36 feet, it's just okay. over 10 meters. Okay. You can find a lot of lobsters in that, that depth. You're not, okay. you're not even gonna have to get that deep at all. Uh, so you just, you did more than you're gonna have to do. Congratulations, that's over here. Good. <laughs> Next, we're off to find shallower waters, similar to what I'll be in tomorrow. So we're putting all of the lessons together. All right, this is a whole lot shallower. So we are in about 15, 16 feet of water. This is gonna be a little bit easier. It's been a really long day. I'm tired and I'm still struggling to put all the techniques to use in what feels like to me, an alien environment. But now that I'm down here, I have to say, it's definitely worth the price of admission. I even got a proper introduction to a few of our spiny lobster friends, safe for the time being in their off-season haven. I can't believe how much fun I had. I am like beyond impressed by what you've taught me and the way I went from like completely uncomfortable in the water to like, I now feel like I can actually do this. You did a fantastic thing. Thank you. I cannot wait for tomorrow. I feel like, I feel like I can do this. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> I see it. I hope so, I hope so. We're off to an early start the next morning in an effort to beat the crowds and secure a good location. Our guide today is Captain Tony Young, owner of Forever Young Charters. Captain Tony has been guiding in these waters for years and knows just the spot for a spiny lobster adventure. I am super excited about this. I had a great day training yesterday and I am ready for this. How deep are we? So right now we're in about 20 feet of water. Coral reef is beautiful here. There's a really good marine life and it's fun looking for the lobster up underneath the okay. coral heads and everything. All right, let's do this. Awesome. And just like that, after all the training and preparation, the pursuit of this elusive crustacean has begun. Bree is right at home in the water and wastes no time finding her first prey. There are multiple methods for safely capturing spiny lobster. We'll primarily use the tickle stick method, which Captain Tony instructed us on this morning. And you just like take this stick, go behind their tail and just tickle it. Okay. That's why we call it tickle stick. Uh -huh. And they walk right out of the hole. Okay. And then. Once they get out, quickly put the net right behind them. And then them, grab them. Remove the grab stick. Them in the net. Grab them. Okay. So that's kind of the most popular, fun way. Kind of chaotic, but a blast. Poking on a lobster, trying to get it to crawl out from underneath a rock, requires some patience. A really difficult thing to do when you're holding your breath. But I can't wait to give it a try. Bree gets the first catch of the day, and it's a beauty. Measuring at well over three inches on the carapace the minimum size required to keep a lobster in Florida. I got dinner! Score! <laughs> first one on the books, it's gonna be a good day. I head down for my first attempt. Tony's already got one lined up for me. But just as I get the net over him, he squeezes out from underneath it. It's frustrating to be so close, only to watch it disappear back into the rocks. I'm also feeling a strange blend of excitement and anxiety, and I know that's not helping. I decided to relax for a while and try to shake it off. I'm reminded of Mike's parting words of advice yesterday to stay calm. I'm learning that freediving for lobsters is just as much of a mental game as it is one of skill. 
After focusing on my breathing, my heart rate goes down and I'm ready to try again. And this time, success. I've harvested a lot of wildlife and there's always some elation over a successful hunt. But with all the obstacles and fears I've overcome, this is a moment I will cherish for a very long time. That was awesome. Oh, I don't know how you stay down there for so damn long. <laughs> Although, like, it is funny, like, once I had him, it's like, I didn't even think about coming up right now. Right? You don't think about it. You're just, just like, like, I'm gonna get it. Get this damn thing. Yeah. yeah. The rest of the day is a blur of activity. With every dive, I'm staying down longer and what was once a conscious effort becomes easier and easier. The lobster hold fills up quickly and before you know it, we've hit our bag limit of six a person. Uh, this has been incredible. I, this is my first time ever lobster diving and I cannot believe that I freaking did it. You did it, girl. <laughs> Thank you so it. much. You guys did awesome. Uh, like you've been incredible helping us like first find thank everything. Uh, so thank you so much. Yeah, you thank you. Thank you for putting us on. And you're a badass in the water. <laughs> like there was like a rodeo going on down there and you still <laughs> managed to keep your cool. That was really impressive. Yeah. Hey, I'm proud of you because you were so nervous on day, the, before we even got in the water, before you even took your class and look at you now. I know, it's like a night and day out. difference. Night and day difference. Yeah. Um, now comes the best part. You guys get to cook it. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm really excited to cook these. Uh, it's going to be delicious, and we have enough lobsters to do a few different ways with them. You guys both did great. <laughs> Back on dry land, Bree is going to show me how to humanely kill and clean our catch of the day. All right, so they're technically asleep because it's very cold, but now that it's heating up, they're getting they're warm. Waking so we wanna they're waking up. They're waking up. We want to mainly kill them quickly. Yeah. What's the best way to do that? Finding the soft spot on their stomach and piercing your knife through it. There's there's nothing that feels soft. Well, if not, you can even go in here. It's easy with a paring knife too, if you want. Oh, this just like glides right in. Yeah. Just Whoa. Do it, just shove it in there. Just all. He's yeah. okay. It's, there you go. He's, he's, he's okay. See, he's dead. So you're gonna run your knife Got it. gently around, like pushing it towards the shell. Perfect, just like that. Yep. And then all you're gonna do is twist, gently twist. Okay, so it is like a shrimp. Yep, and you're gonna feel <gasps> it break. And look at, look how much oh! other meat you got. See? This is just See, like a giant all that shrimp. Meat from there. Like any animal or fish we've harvested, we try to utilize as much as we can. We'll be using the shells for a stock, so we need to clean out the internal organs and the blood, which, shockingly, is black. Like that? Yeah! Uh, did empty. you take out the insides? Yeah. Oh, you are, you're heavy. Right. Oh yeah, there you go. Ten more to go. Ten more Just to go. Just like that. ton of lobsters to cook. Yeah, um, I am really excited because here we are in the Keys and I, I know that I'm going to take a little bit of a Caribbean flair to it, but mm. I'm really excited to cook with you because you're a pastry chef. I'm Yeah, I'm trained in both savory and pastry and I have ran kitchens as both. So today I thought it'd be fun to do a savory version on a classic French dessert. So I am going to be making a butter poached lobster eclair. Yum. So it's gonna look just like those Parisian desserts, but it's yeah. going to be completely savory. And it's just a really fun take to highlight that baking is not necessarily always sweet. That's gonna be awesome. I'm making two different things, a really classic, Lobsters grilled on the half shell with the rum butter because Delicious. we're in the Keys. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take these lovely lobsters head, utilize the whole thing so that we can have stock because I think 
crustacean shellfish stock is like so delicious so underrated so good so I'm gonna take the stock from the lobsters and make this really nice sauce with a lot of key lime and it's just ginger, like bright and refreshing and mm -hmm. serve that on top of some creamy coconut grits. And my thought process there is that I love how there's this distinct texture to spiny lobsters that's yeah. actually closer to shrimp than it is like mm -hmm. a main lobster. Right. So that's why I'm doing the play on shrimp and grits uh, with a little oh, Caribbean influence. I love influence. that. I love so, that. Yeah, we have like a lot of fun things to do. I think we should get started first with the stock. And I'm going to steal some of your stock and I'm going to reduce it and make a sauce for the bottom of my eclair. Yeah, so. perfect. We'll have plenty of stock. I know, right? All right, I'm going to get started by cleaning these heads. And I'm going to get started on the mirepoix for our stock so we can get that rolling. Yep. First. Bree starts by chopping up vegetables for the mirepoix, a traditional flavor base originating in French cuisine. We add more aromatics like tomatoes and garlic to bring out the flavor and add more depth. With a splash of white wine and enough water to cover, our lobster stock is ready to simmer. This is going to be good. Next, Bree works on our pastry dough which begins with a roux made from butter and flour. Then it's moved to a blender where eggs are added one at a time. And finally, it's transferred into a piping bag for easy distribution on the baking sheet. That looks so frustrating. It's a little, you know, it's a little, it's a little difficult. This is a lot prettier than just a tip that's just round. Yeah. The grooves. I always feel like you eat with your eyes first. Yeah, so I say that all the time. Do you? I Same do. here. So I always like want my dishes to be really pretty. The final step is to add a salty, savory Parmesan crackling crust, and then it's in the oven to bake. We're just gonna grab one of these. They're frozen, so make sure you don't um, break them. And we're just gonna lay it right on top. Of each That's one. it. That's it. That is so pretty. I can't wait to see what it looks, it looks like. So good. While the dough cooks, I start the prep work for my grilled lobster tails. And since I can't come to the Florida Keys without having some rum, I find a way to infuse it into my dish. I'm making a sweet and savory butter that combines onion, coconut sugar, Caribbean jerk spices, and of course, rum. With its direct shipping lanes to the Caribbean, Florida has always had a rich history with rum, but especially during Prohibition. The rum runners, as they were called, were particularly successful in keeping the sugar-based booze flowing into the Sunshine State until Prohibition ended in 1933. The lobsters get a healthy coating of the rum butter and are flash seared on the top sides to caramelize. Then I flip them over so that the shells block direct heat, allowing to cook just a little more gently. I'd say the biggest mistake you can make with spiny lobster is to overcook it. It'll turn dry and rubbery real quick. Like shrimp, it should just barely be cooked through so that it remains bouncy in texture, juicy, and succulent. Back in the kitchen, it's time to check on our lobster stock. That's really flavorful. I think it needs a touch of salt, but I think like we can ocean. strain it. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Here we go. Move this for you. I'm gonna use this stock in my lobster grits. Uh, it's not gonna go in the grits, actually. The grits, I'm doing coconut, so it's really nice and sweet. I'm gonna do a really savory, but light and refreshing sauce with key lime, ginger, stock, reduce it down, and then add the lobster uh, to just gently poach it in, and then add butter to finish and serve. Our final task is to assemble Breeze pastries. We've already prepared the filling, which is an avocado and cream mousse with lobster, gently sauteed in butter. Okay, so we have like a lot of components going on. How do <laughs> yep. we put this all together? So we're gonna put it all together, let's, let's start. So the sauce, which is a lobster bisque-esque sauce, is gonna go down first. We're gonna take our avocado cream, and we're going to pipe. So this would be like the filling of the eclair. Okay. Then we're gonna add some lobster right on top, very carefully. Then we can put this one down on our plate. Like that. 
Then we're gonna do some chili mango coulis. the mousse on top. So I want it to look like a French pastry. Okay. Wow. Then we're gonna just do a little dot. This is so beautiful, <laughs> Brie. Oh lobster my gosh. eclairs, spiny lobster eclairs. Wow. Let's see if it holds up to the humidity while we eat outside, huh? Yeah, let's go eat. <laughs> Ocean to table. Cheers to that. What wow, an that's adventure, good. huh? Doing something totally new and totally outside my comfort zone has given me that same feeling like the first time I've ever hunted of like right. excitement, so proud. I'm like so grateful for this meal and everything. So thank you so much for taking oh, me you're out. Oh, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Well, I have to actually try to this, try this lobster. Mm-hmm. That's really good. It's quite amazing. Good job. Thank you. All right, I have to try your eclair. This looks amazing. It's almost too pretty to eat. Mmm. Has a lot going on and it's oh fantastic. I'm glad you like it. Mm-hmm. I never get to do this with other women. So this is like such a special treat to like do the whole experience of diving and cooking and like with you. It's been amazing. I'm so glad you like the diving part though. That just <laughs> made my heart so happy. If we even if we didn't get any lobsters, as long as you had fun, that, I did. that's all I that matters. I did, I had a blast. It was amazing. Good, I'm so glad. If you had asked me several months ago if I could free dive for spiny lobster, I'd probably say no. I really had to push past my comfort zone and I'm so glad I did. Sourcing food yourself isn't always easy, and oftentimes there are some hard learning lessons. But when everything comes together, you not only feel so empowered, but incredibly grateful for the entire experience. <laughs>